Hey internet, you were super excited to see the AirJet at CES. The good news is we are here at Four Systems in San Jose, California, where Dr. Seishu Madhavapati is going to give us a lab tour. Our pleasure, Gordon. Welcome to Four Systems. I think probably what people of the internet want to know though is can we actually saw one of these open and look inside? Are you ready to do that yet? Not quite yet. You know, this is a new product we're just introducing into the market. And we've built this using a lot of proprietary design techniques and materials. And so we're not quite ready to open the kimono yet. Okay. But I can share with you a high level uh, cross section at, to give you an idea about how it works. Okay, I think that's good because it it's really good to to help me understand it, because what exactly is it doing? Sure. Well, here's a little graphic GIF, uh, that gives you the idea. You know, it's a 2.8 millimeter thick uh, uh, air jet mini, as well as pro. They're both 2.8 millimeters thick. And uh, that's conceptually what the cross section looks like and what it does. You know, you basically have uh, two sections inside. The top is a cavity with vibrating membranes in it. And uh, what it does is when the membranes are vibrating, they pull air through the vents at the top. And then that air is pushed down at the bottom of that cavity at very high velocities. Velocities uh, reaching up to 200 kilometers per hour or 120 miles an hour. And those jets of air, they're pulsating jets of air, are impinging on the copper heat spreader at the bottom of the air jet. And that's where the heat extraction is happening. So the, the principle is that you would attach this copper heat spreader to the hot surface. So the copper heat spreader gets as hot as the surface you're trying to cool. And then when you turn the air jet on, these membranes vibrate, suck in air through the top. The air that's pulled in is going through the cavity and hitting the copper heat spreader as pulsating jets. And using a principle called jet impingement, we are able to extract heat with high efficiency from the copper heat spreader. And then the hot air exits through a spout at the left. And the air that is exiting is saturated with heat, which means that the exit air temperature is the same as the temperature of the copper heat spreader. So it's a highly efficient way of heating, removing heat. And so we are able to maximize the amount of heat you can remove for the amount of air that is going through the chip. One of the big questions that came out of the demos at CES was concerns about dust. Now, at CES, you actually said though, the air jet actually is better for dust control in devices. How exactly does that work? The way it works is, you know, you, you have two ways it can work. One, you can put a dust guard on the inlet vents of the device so that any air that actually enters the device is already filtered for dust. So dust doesn't enter the device at all. And therefore the devi entire device is dust proof. Okay. An alternative way of handling it would be that you can actually put the dust guard directly as part of the air jet mini. So you can actually place the dust guard directly on the air jet mini. And if you did that, then if air comes in, then it is sucked into the air jet because of the high back pressure without any loss of flow into the air jet. Okay, so, you know, this membrane, how are you able to, because how are you able to get the air to pass through that? Is it similar to like Gore-Tex in a way with water? Yes, it is. Uh, you know, this basically is dust proof and waterproof material. So, We've selected a specific material that actually filters out all dust that's less than one micron in diameter. So micro dust can still go through, but other than that, all the dust is filtered out by this dust guard material. And micro dust doesn't really impact the performance of the air jet itself. Just as air comes in, gets saturated with heat and is ejected out, the dust just passes through as well along with the air. Okay. And so it's too anything small that's to more trapped. than one micron is filtered out, is not entering the chip and anything that is smaller than a micron will just get flushed out along with the air. So and that's actually what we're gonna see tested here. We do extensive product and reliability testing in our labs. Our volume manufacturing fab is actually in Taiwan. 
but the entire design of the product and also the life cycle testing in order to ensure that the product is reliable is done here. So you, you are here in our R&D product reliability testing lab. And one of the tests we do is using dust. And here's a chamber. And you can see that you know we've got fine powder and a bunch of air jet minis that are running. And we have a fan that blows the air continuously. And we run this nonstop for 10 days in a highly dust-filled chamber. And we make sure that the, at the end of the 10 days, there's less than 5% degradation in performance of the air jet. So we do extensive testing of all sorts in order to make sure that the product is reliable and has a five-year lifetime. You know, one of the misconceptions I, I think that was out there is that this, this simply is a fan. This is like a fancy way to make a fan. You know, is it a fan or is it not a fan? It's definitely, most definitely not a fan. Uh, we are using solid state to move air, but it is not just moving air, it's actually using the air to remove heat. So it's a self-contained heat removing active cooling chip. Sure, it uses moving air, but it uses the air most efficiently and the heat transfer is happening inside the chip itself, not outside the chip. So uh, it's um, air-based active cooling chip, but uh, it's, it's a heat removing chip. It's right. not a heat, uh, it's not an air moving chip right. alone. You wouldn't use this to blow into basically a... Uh, that would be a waste of the capabilities of this chip. I mean, we are not trying to replace a ceiling fan. We are trying to improve the thermal performance of computing devices. So for that reason, this is something that has been custom built for heat removal, active heat removal, unlike a fan, which has been repurposed for removing heat in a computing device, which is not the original reason why fans were invented. Fans were invented to blow air on a hot summer's evening. Right, right. And they've been repurposed for heat removal. So we didn't have to do any of that. We built this from scratch as an active heat removing chip. So Sashu, can you explain what this test is doing right now? What you have here is called an HTHHO chamber, which is high temperature, high humidity operation. We put air jets inside and we power them on and we leave them in there for 10 days nonstop. And in those 10 days, the temperature inside the chamber keeps cycling between 55 degrees C and negative 10 degrees C. And the humidity is cycled between 95% relative humidity and zero. So there's constant changes in temperature and humidity inside the chamber, and that's happening nonstop for 10 days while the agent is running. So this is called an accelerated lifetime test profile. And we do that and make sure that once again, before and after, less than 5% degradation in the capability of the AirJet mini chip uh, as a result of the accelerated life test. And this is to simulate it working in a really a harsh environments, I guess, right? Not just that, it's actually simulating a longer life. So reliability is a very interesting science. So they come up with these test criteria that give you very high confidence that if it has been able to perform in this type of situation for 10 days, then that means that you will have several years of lifetime normal operation. So there are a battery of tests like this one we do. Dust was one, accelerated lifetime testing is on one. And then we also run a test flat out for 2,000 hours nonstop to make sure that there's no degradation in performance. So it's a combination of all these tests that we do that ensures that we are confident that the product we're shipping uh, can work uh, in, 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 in a product, in a device for five years. How can this be solid state if there's a moving membrane inside? <laughs> well, you know, I think that people misunderstand what solid state means. Solid state doesn't mean there's nothing moving. It just means that it is about how you create that movement. If you're using an electric motor to create the movement, then it's not solid state. If you're using materials that don't have moving parts in them in order to create your, the motion, then it's solid state. Like for example, if you have a sensor like an accelerometer or a gyroscope, it's solid state, but there is motion in it. And as you, as you know, you know, quartz clocks 
are solid state, but they do have moving parts in them. So moving parts doesn't mean it's not solid state, it's about how you create that motion that determines whether something is solid state or not. Okay, good good one, because I, I really, that was what a lot of people really were more wondering. But, but that's semantics. Yeah, it is semantics. <laughs> I have another question about the shape of this too, because I, I noticed at the end of it, it actually necks down. What's the reason for making it neck down at the end of it? Ah, so, so if you see the construction of the air jet, you're absolutely right. At the tip of this chip, we have the spout, which is the exit for the hot air. And we want the hot air to exit fast and exit in a laminar fashion so that it is able to move out quickly. And also as it comes out of the uh, chip, it entrains cool air, which means that the hot air gets uh, diffused uh, into the ambient air very quickly. So even though there's a lot of hot air coming out of this with very high temperature, even if you put your finger a millimeter away, you're not going to feel the heat because by the time it has traveled that much distance, it has already mixed with cool air. Huh. So in order to make sure that we get the right um, effect uh, in terms of diffusion of the hot air into the ambient air, we've designed this spout in such a manner that you know, it's narrow, and so the air comes out fast. Uh, there's also another reason, obviously, you know, you want this uh, exit to be as small as possible so that the exit vent in the device that this goes into can be really small. Hmm. And um, uh, most notebook manufacturers wouldn't want to have a, 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 a gap in their uh, form factor that is more than one millimeter in uh, width. Okay. So this uh, meets that spec. Hmm. Okay, just makes it smaller and then also increases the velocity. So, so that you have this entrainment of air. Okay. So Sashi, what are we seeing on the screen here? This is pretty cool. This is a Schlieren image of uh, an Airjet Mini in action. So what you see here is the Airjet Mini. And uh, as it uh, cools the processor, the air picks up heat. And what's coming out is the exhaust air out of the Airjet Mini through the spout. And as the air is coming out, it's hot, so it is at a different density compared to the air around it. And so in a Schlieren image, you are able to use uh, light diffraction, and you can actually dynamically capture the differences in air density. So as a result, you're able to see the hot air coming out of the uh, air jet mini. If I put a fan here, what would I see? You don't see anything because there is no difference in the uh, temperature or the air density because fan itself is only an air moving device. You can't capture air movement using Schlieren unless there is a temperature difference. So that I think actually comprehensively proves that AJET is not just an air moving device, it's a heat removal device. It's an active heat removing chip that uses air. So cool air goes into the chip and hot air comes out. And what you're seeing here is the hot air coming out. Yeah, and that to me, that like a lot of the misconceptions I think of, of AirJet it seemed like, because people thought it was just a fancy fan, but it isn't. No, so. no. This is a complete heat removing active cooling chip. It's a complete heat removing system in a chip where it just uses air, no doubt. So ambient cool air goes in and hot air comes out and the heat exchange is happening inside the chip to the air. And the air that comes out is saturated with heat because if you recall, we talked about jet impingement. So that's a very efficient way of heat transfer. So the air that's coming out is essentially at the same temperature as the processor or the copper heat spreader, if you will, at the bottom of the air jet chip. And that's what you're seeing here. And there's a couple of principles there that, uh, you know, I don't understand. What does jet impingement mean? So jet impingement is just a technique where if you have moving air, moving air is very good at removing heat from a hot surface. But how well it removes heat depends on how fast the air is moving. If you keep increasing the speed of air, then you will be able to remove more heat for the same volume of air. As well, if the air is directed vertically towards a hot surface, it removes more heat than if it is just blowing over a hot surface. So now you take those two principles together. You create these jets of air which are traveling at, you know, as I said, up to 200 kilometers per hour. And those jets of air 
are impinging on the hot surface perpendicularly, okay. then they are much more efficient at heat removal than air that is just blowing at a low velocity horizontally over a hot surface. So what's happening right here now? Well, this is another of the reliability tests we do on the air jet. This one's a long lifetime test. Now you've seen the high humidity, high temperature chamber and you've seen the dust. A third one is, you know, just running it flat out. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, in this test, we run the air jet for 2000 hours continuously. And that's about uh, three months of continuous operation. And we uh, once again, make sure that the performance of the chip has degraded, if any, less than 5% after the 2000 hour test. And that has to be true of 100% of the devices. And this, these look like scales. These aren't scales. No, these are hot plates. So we are emulating the performance of the air jet inside a notebook, for example, by putting the air jet on top of a hot plate. And it's at 85C, which is essentially what the die temperature would be typically. And then we are running them at 100% operation. And we do that nonstop for 2,000 hours. You know, Sasha, I do have one other business question. And that is, I've seen a lot of technologies that really are impressive and wow you, but if they can't make business sense, it's, it's, a, it's a tough road. You're gonna be going up against fans that cost 50 cents, 75 cents, you know, a dollar. Are you gonna be able to really pit this product against those commodity parts that you can get every, you can get really cheap? I'm just wondering as a business sense. They're not 50 cents, oh, okay. <laughs> but, but it's a good question. Uh, ultimately, this is not a commodity. This is a new cutting edge technology that we're just introducing into the market. So uh, off the bat, it's certainly going to be uh, a little bit more expensive, I would say, than a fan, but not prohibitively so. So we are working with uh, device manufacturers right now, uh, and it makes perfect sense. The cost structure makes perfect sense for them to use it uh, in, in, uh, in notebooks, and also in all these other devices that I talked about. Are we as cheap as a fan? No, but uh, is it priced that would be reasonable and acceptable uh, by the device manufacturers? The answer is an emphatic yes. Okay, so we've seen the AirJet in a lot of other demos, but it doesn't matter to you, put it in the laptop, and you actually have a couple laptops to show off the AirJets in action, right? So That's can right. you tell me what's happening? Sure, so here we have a 13 inch uh, laptop, uh, ultra thin laptop, and the one on the left is off the shelf, uh, and it has a fan in it. When you run the Cinebench uh, on a steady state basis, the CPU power that is supported by the fan and the thermal solution is 12 and a half watts of CPU power. And that's the steady state performance. We've been running Cinebench here for a while. What we've done is taken the same laptop, removed the fan, and retrofitted it with three AirJet Mini inside the laptop. And we are able to sustain 15 watts of power for the CPU. So you are seeing a pretty decent bump up uh, in performance, and of course, at the same time, the one with the airjet is completely quiet, and of course, the fan makes noise. Um, <clears throat> the reason that we only were uh, put were put three airjet mini in this is because when you're retrofitting, the space that is available is not ideal for putting in airjet mini. So we could only squeeze in three, even though there was plenty of space left over because it was just not the right shape for us to put a fourth airjet mini. But you, apples to apples. If you actually utilize all the space that is taken up by the fan, uh, a, a fair comparison would be four mini, because in the same space you can put four mini. And had we been able to put four mini, we would have achieved 20 watts of CPU performance. So 12 and a half to 20, noisy to quiet. You know, and I will say, even this is, is actually fairly quiet too, right? The fan, I mean, it is noisier because this feels completely silent, but. I kind of wonder if you go to a bigger laptop that is tuned to be higher performance, right? Like You're absolutely right. This particular laptop has chosen a lower RPM operation for the fan in order to keep it quiet. So if you cranked up the fan to a higher RPM, you could push the power for the CPU to 15 watts, but it's going to be really noisy. Right, right. But you are going to be hard pressed to get better than 15 in an ultra thin laptop, 13 inch uh, using fan. Whereas with four mini, we can go to 20. 
And that's actually what you have in one of these laptops, right? That's right. So here's uh, another example of a laptop. Uh, this is a 15-inch laptop. And in this laptop, we've been able to put in 4 Jet Mini. And you can see that with 4 Jet Mini, you are at, at 20 watts. So if we were able to put 4 in there, we would have gotten that to 20 as well. Right. So with 4 Jet Mini, uh, it is in steady state. The CPU package power supported is 20 watts. And that's that proves the point that we can get to 20 watts with 4 Jet Mini. And I think to me, the besides the thermal uh, messaging, the difference is noise, because I can hear th this this laptop from a few feet away. That's what we typically get in a lot of real, it's still really thin, but I, the, the fan noise is what kind of drives people crazy sometimes. That's correct, that's correct. So the whole point is we are saying, you don't have to compromise on noise, you don't have to compromise on thickness of the laptop, but yet you can improve the performance. This particular 15 inch laptop, we put four edge at mini to show 20, but you could also design a 15-inch laptop with three AirJet Pro. And if you had three AirJet Pro, then you would get 28 watts in the same form factor. With the fan, it's at 17. So with the same space, same XY area, you can put three AirJet Pro and you can get to 28. So from 17, you're going to 28, and at the same time, reducing, eliminating the noise. So that's, that's the, that's basically shows the advantage of uh, the air jet. And of course, you can do that. We're also making some uh, real key improvements to the industrial design. You don't need to have vents uh, at the bottom of the laptop anymore. And also you can make the device dust proof and get the same performance. And actually that's, that's a really good point because I think that's this, kind of makes a, a good point here. This is the same smaller this, the laptop. The 13-inch laptop, the that's 13 right. Laptop. So this is the fan that goes into the 13-inch laptop that it, it currently ships with. And what we've done is we've taken that out and replaced that with three AirJet Mini. You can see the dust guards uh, with three AirJet Mini. And But you can see that the area that's taken up by the three AirJet Mini is actually less than the fan area. It's just an odd-shaped fan, so we couldn't put a fourth. But in the same area, XY area, you could actually put a, a fourth air jet mini. That's, that's, the, that's the point I was trying to make. But also with the fan, you have all these holes at the bottom. And this is the reason why dust goes in, because of all these holes at the bottom. What we do when you have an air jet mini system is you can completely block it with the, um, over here, so you can see it, right? So that's so it's completely that's blocked. You block it for your yeah. demo. There's no reason for us to have those anymore. Obviously, you know, if you're designing with Airjet Mini, you would not make these holes because it's actually expensive to make these holes. CNC is expensive, so you don't need the holes. But the, what we did was because the holes were already there, we just covered it with opaque material so that there's no air going in through those vents. Right, and you know, the interesting thing to me is like I don't. Almost every laptop I've seen has uh, fan vents on the bottom. That's correct. And the classic point is you, you put on your shag carpet or your pillow. A lot of people, they put on their comforter and their edit. You, that's a problem because you just blocked all those fan vents, right? That's correct. Actually, I mean, nowadays it's more important than ever that your laptop works well on a comforter. And when you have inlet vents at the bottom, it's actually a terrible idea to put it on a comforter because the inlet vents are at the bottom. They get completely blocked. And what happens when you put it on a comforter is then the fan revs up in speed, trying to compensate, but still it can't, so it keeps thrashing. It gets faster, louder, but it doesn't really create any airflow because all the inlet vents are blocked. And so then the whole notebook gets hotter. So it's really counterintuitive, but when you're in a comforter and you're in bed, your laptop might become hotter and noisier and less performing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a classic story, right, because a lot of people run into that problem. But with AirJet, you you can suck air in the sides or? That's correct. So our design, I mean, guideline really is, you know, right here in the, in the center at the back, right here at the center of the back, you would have the inlet vent if you're using AirJet. Nothing in the bottom. Okay. Right here at the center of the back. So the air goes in through that. And, uh, and you also cover that vent with the uh, uh, dust guard dust filter material so okay. that even though there's actually a vent and air is going through the discrete vent at the back, 
no dust is going in because you can cover the vent with dust proof filter material. Right. The same material that I showed you that we put on the air jet itself, you can also put on the inlet vent. And again, you couldn't do that. You couldn't put the dust proof material in a laptop with a fan because not enough back pressure. That's correct. Uh, of course, the, the big question for a lot of people too is um, when are we gonna see this in a product? As I told you at CES, we are working with uh, several uh, device manufacturers as we speak, designing this into their uh, future devices. And you will see products coming out, commercial products coming out into the market later this year. Um, but I can't, I can't, you know, jump the gun and make Got announcements it. before our customers are ready to do it. Sure. Uh, and then I guess the natural part of, other part of that question is, where else are we going to see this? Clearly, we've seen a lot of demonstrations with PC laptops, good place for it. But this seems like, you know, we could go on to M.2 drives and go into cameras and get into gaming handheld set. Where else do you think we're going to see this? Uh, we are seeing interest from several markets uh, as we speak. Uh, we started off with notebooks, and uh, I've seen the demos. This one right here is the notebook where we've got four Airjet minis in it. If you replace the, f if instead of four Airjet mini, you put in three Airjet Pro into this, then you can get the CPU power up to 28 watts. Those are the two popular configurations that we are currently working on. Four Airjet mini getting you to 20 watts of CPU power, or three Airjet Pro getting you to 28 watts of CPU power in a notebook. So that's very popular. But the same Mini and Pro can be used, as you said, in other devices. Uh, handheld gaming, um, one Airjet Pro or two Airjet Mini would do very well uh, for a handheld gaming device. We're also seeing interest from uh, NVMe M2 uh, SSD manufacturers. Uh, once you get to densities that are you know, four or eight terabytes, uh, with the you know SSD controller and a, and a Thunderbolt port controller and so on and so forth, you are now hitting a thermal envelope that cannot be sustained in a small form factor using only passive heat dissipation. So they're showing a lot of interest in uh, including the Airjet Mini into those devices. We're also seeing a lot of interest from um, uh, camera manufacturers, uh, webcams, uh, um, small security cams, and also. Um, you know, action cameras. Uh, they're becoming very powerful in terms of the kind of video they can capture and the AI that they include. And so their thermal envelopes are going beyond the amount of heat that can be dissipated in the small form factor that they have. So adding an air jet would work very well for them. And um, you're making these yourself or you fabless? We are actually uh, an integrated design and manufacturing company, so we fab it ourselves. And the reason for that, you know, this is built using unique design techniques, unique uh, materials, and unique manufacturing processes. So there isn't a fab out there that knows how to do this. Uh, we built this process technology ourselves. And so we built the fab that, you know, uh, manifests our process technology ourselves. So we have a fab in Taiwan where we're fabbing it. Um, but as we scale, you know, we absolutely do intend to have manufacturing partners that will help us to scale much faster than we can do ourselves. Another interesting segment we are seeing a lot of interest in is mini PC. You know, there's no display, right? It's right, just right. a mini PC, and so you can connect a keyboard to it and connect a display to it and make it into a PC. So the mini PC market uh, is pretty interesting because they want it to be really small, like right. a hockey puck, but at the same time have very high processing capability, and, but they've got to solve thermals. And no one wants the mini PC to be noisy. So adding Airjet in it uh, is a perfect match. So basically anywhere where there is a, 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 a really hot CPU, GPU, or sensor, it feels like this is like a perfect application for it. That's... We think so, we think so. Uh, you know, I mean, as I said right now, you know, we are operating in the, you know, 10 to let's say 30, 40 watts as the overall processing power that we're able to support in this generation with Airjet Mini, Airjet Pro. This is scalable, so you can put you know, four Airjet Mini or two or three Airjet Pro and get to supporting that type of uh, uh, CPU power. But some of your gaming applications, you need a lot more than that. So I, we do intend to address that kind of performance requirement, but uh, in uh, subsequent generations of products, we're not quite there yet, but we hope to get there in the coming years. Okay, because I mean, that's obviously 
people want to know, can I cool my video card or my desktop in this? But we're not there. That's getting too far down the road, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we, this is a first generation product. We just introduced it. And we are using techniques to build this that are semiconductor technology based. Uh, we also use a lot of techniques from the display industry that we repurpose for this particular product. So all of those bode well for us to be able to continue to innovate and improve performance uh, year on year at a pretty significant clip. Uh, we would like to you know, bring the same uh, you know, expectation that you have in the, uh, in the semiconductor industry at large. You know, everybody expects things to improve 30, 40, 50 percent one year to the next. We believe we can achieve the same, but we're just beginning that journey. Hmm. Anyway, thanks for having us down here, uh, showing us all this great stuff. We really hope to see it in action soon, and hopefully we'll see that on PC World's YouTube channel. So come back to uh, PC World's YouTube channel for more videos, hopefully coming, covering products from Fror Systems, as well as other awesome things in the PC ecosystem. Thank you.